Welcome back to this series of Black Hat Fast Chats. It's Terry Sweeney, contributing editor with Black Hat. And I'm joined now by Katie paxton Fear, application security engineer with Bug Crowd. Katie, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. It's great to be here. Uh, our, uh, our, our topic is uh, uh, chatting about machine learning security or MLSEC. Uh, but before we go there, um, for those of us who don't know you, tell us a bit about your background and, and how you got into security. So I always say that I got into security kind of by mistake. Uh, my background is very much data science. I have a degree in computer science and I was really into machine learning. I love machine learning. And my background is like natural language processing. I find the language just fascinating because it's the way we interact with the world. Like we don't necessarily interact with the world uh, through buttons. We, we interact through language, we talk to one another. And it's such a integral part of what makes us human. That I was just like, that's fascinating. So I did that, I finished university, I worked as a data scientist for a bit and I was walking to work one day and I realized I hated my job. Um, <laughs> so I quit and I went to do a PhD. Unfortunately, um, academic entries are like in September and I had this realization on lunch break in uh, October, so I was a bit late. So there was only like two PhDs for me to choose from and one was in security and the other one was not really what I wanted to do. So I was like, well, Yes, I'm going to get into security. So I did my PhD for a bit and I realized um, I really loved hacking. Like I found hacking really, really interesting. Um, and I never intended to kind of get here, but that kind of like sparked this like integral love of breaking things. And with that, I kind of then mixed it with things like data science and my um, background there. And I was like, yeah, this is something I want to do. This is like, combining you know the power of statistical analysis with the fun of breaking stuff um so that's kind of how i got into security okay uh, so i'm curious with with your background in machine learning and communication and 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 how the world works are machines starting to talk more like people or is is the reverse happening where 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 where's the line moving I think people think that machines are a lot more clever than they actually are. Um, a lot of the time we kind of think about machines as being like these super sophisticated robots that can do anything. Um, but actually a lot of it is like smoke and mirrors. Um, and just instead of, you know, machines that are super clever, really smart rules. A lot of people don't realize that actually some of the best ways we understand language is not through machine learning, but through rules about how things like grammar works. Um, so I'd say, I don't think we're talking, I don't think machines are able to talk more like humans, though certainly there have been some really exciting developments that are getting there. Um, but no, quite a lot of it is just if statements, if statements and code. You mentioned your 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 PhD a few minutes ago. Um, I'm, I'm curious a bit about the, the, the subject and the topic of your thesis, um, but also some of the maybe surprises or discoveries or just unexpected results that, that emerged from your data. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so my PhD is understanding inside of threats using natural language processing. So traditionally, the way we kind of, uh, not necessarily detect, but manage the risk of inside of threat is really through things like anomaly detection, looking at behavior. Uh, and that's like behavior on a computer system, you know, what files are you opening? What's inside those files you're copying and pasting? You know, a classic inside of threat, um, especially on the malicious side, is you open a document and then email it to your personal email address. Um, like super simple uh, kind of attack that can be quite well found in like in computer systems. But then when you look at something like unintentional inside of threat, leaving a laptop somewhere and just forgetting about it, that's when you start to get, you know, that doesn't leave a technical signature. It gets a bit more tricky. And especially even with like malicious insider threat, there's a lot we don't understand about the behavioral side of things. The kind of why does somebody do that? And how can we understand what leads someone to commit an insider threat attack and then prevent the next one? So my PhD is all about looking at witness reports of insider threat activity and kind of trying to answer those key questions. So we look at a bunch of reports from different people about an incident and kind of squash them all together to make a visualization of the incident. So, you know, maybe technical like IT staff can say, you know, we saw this in this 
instant, when we do our incident response. Maybe you have a colleague saying, oh, they seem, you know, a bit upset at work one day. You have somebody else who's maybe closer saying, you know, there's something personal going on, but I don't really want to talk about it. You have their manager saying, oh, they were late to work. And you can kind of combine all of these attributes and aspects inside a threat that you can find in the text and then find it and, and kind of visualize it. And I think the most exciting kind of interesting thing to me was kind of how well it worked. Um, I think a lot of the time you go into research, not really kind of expecting it to work or get, you know, I'd be happy if it worked like 50%, but it worked really well. And it was actually like, we had these really clear graphs that show a bunch of the attributes from like well-known literature pieces, like the cert guide to inside a threat. Um, so for me, yeah, that was just mind blowing when it worked, my code worked. Machine learning, I think it's fair to say, is, is taking some baby steps in, in the security industry. <clears throat> Lots of vendors touting these capabilities. If, if you can play this out a bit, and, and we're going to test your predictive powers here. If you look five years out or so, what do you see with regard to machine learning and data science where security is concerned? I think really it, it's in its infancy. It's kind of gotten over the big hype phase. Um, like we're not seeing kind of, you know, necessarily that much more like activity happening. We're seeing it really mature a bit more. And I think there's two kind of threads there. There's first how we use machine learning in security. And the second, and I think the really interesting one is how we use, um, uh, how we test for security machine learning, because we've been using Google Translate for years. People use Google image recognition, the self-driving cars. One of the best ways we know to audit software is to get somebody in and do a penetration test. Well, how do you do a penetration test of AI, of machine learning? What does that look like? What do security issues look like on machine learning? I think that's gonna be really the key question of the next five years is how we actually test these um, and how we can really like develop that kind of maturity aspect, especially as I think machine learning as a whole is beginning to very much in its mature stage. And also with bringing in data science and statistics and all that um, side of things, I think it's just gonna make security like insights that much more visible and that much more real. I think a lot of time we don't necessarily see insights like super well, um, but I think that's definitely something we're going to see, especially as we see machine learning kind of mature uh, over the next few years. Maybe because of all the utopian science fiction <clears throat> of the future that um, has machines and computers doing everything for us and we, we get to be layabouts apparently. Um, there's, there's both concern and fear about machine learning and the role of, of humans in the workforce and in other spheres of life. What do you see as the role of humans with, uh, with machine learning growing at the pace it's growing? That's a really, really good question. And I think it's a really difficult one to answer because I think people have, you know, concerns about, you know, losing their jobs, concerns that they don't necessarily have the ability to reskill into the workforce. I think especially with COVID, now we're seeing a lot more things like unemployment. And that's definitely a wider societal issue that really needs to be discussed at kind of a governmental level. Um, but I really think in kind of talking about more about machines, I think we really want to support the people already doing their jobs. I think too much we focus on replacing them. Like this algorithm will replace you instead of saying this algorithm will try and cut down that noise for you. This algorithm is going to you know, help you manage your work time. This algorithm is going to help you. And I think that ends up creating quite a lot of distrust between people and systems mm. that, you know, we see it all the time in security. When people have a negative attitude towards security because they've been so like, they've had phishing happen. So they end up with this kind of negative opinion of the security. They're just trying to trick me. They end up being less likely to report security issues because they don't feel listened to and they don't really trust security. And I think we're seeing that with machine learning algorithms as well. We're not seeing them support the humans. We're really seeing them trying to replace them. And that's something that I was really aware of when I did my PhD and, and kind of the publications I'm doing after them is, you know, we really want to, you know, support the people who are already experts, who already know what they're doing. 
not necessarily to supplant them, not to replace them, not to promise them everything, but say, hey, here's something that might help. It's fascinating stuff, Katie. Thanks so much for joining us today and imparting a, an interesting perspective on a, a hot topic, machine learning. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. It's been, uh, been really fun. It's one love machine learning. I think, you know, the future is so bright for machine learning and machine learning and security. It, like, it's very much cases if you want to get involved, please do. If you're a data scientist, you're a security engineer, you can totally learn some of this stuff, learn the statistics, learn the... Um, uh, learn the security side and you can really contribute and make a difference in this field. Thanks, Katie. We've been talking with Katie Paxton Fear of Bug Crowd. This has been Terry Sweeney for Black Hat. Thanks for joining us today. See you next time. <laughs>